What is staking cryptocurrency? What are the benefits and drawbacks of doing it? Is staking your coins safe? And should you even bother doing it? These questions I hope to answer in this video. Hey guys, welcome back. In this one, I wanna talk about staking cryptocurrency, the pros, the cons, and if you should do it at all. Staking is still kind of new right now, as is cryptocurrency in general. Not all coins support it, but you can find lists and also stake coins on services like Binance and Coinbase. I will link those in the description for you, along with other helpful videos and materials, plus the timestamps for this video in there as well, so check that out. But let's get into what staking actually is. So with staking cryptocurrencies or staking coins, on a very basic level, you can use the coins that you have, leave them somewhere else where you can't use them for a period of time, and then in the future, actually receive more coins back than you initially had. I often like to compare staking coins as putting some cash into a bank, into a long-term saving account, and then after a certain period of time, getting that cash back and interest on top. It's kind of easy to think of it like that, but fundamentally the two aren't the same at all. With interest on cash, the bank actually pays you an interest for being able to use your money to invest in other things like bonds, shares, or loans. That's not what happens with staking cryptocurrency though. You aren't actually lending your coins out to someone else so that they can go and invest it. Staking is the process of actively participating in transaction validation on a proof of stake blockchain. I'll talk about proof of stake and proof of work in a second, because if you know the difference, then you can understand what staking really is. Staking essentially works by rewarding people that stake their coins. The rules do differ in terms of how you get rewarded, but if you do have staked coins, you may be rewarded with being able to make new blocks in the blockchain, and people that do that get rewarded with new coins. Fundamentally then, if you have coins, and you use them to stake, you could get more coins. And coins have value, of course, which is a way to entice more people to stake their coins to protect the viability of the blockchain. And that's really important to keep the blockchain working in the right way. Up until now, systems have used a proof of work model where computers have to try and work out really complex equations, which is very, very slow and resource heavy. Proof of stake is an attempt to reduce barriers to entry for people trying to support the running of the network. So to explain how staking works, we can see what the difference is between proof of work and proof of stake, because they're two different ways of going about the same problem, which is really trying to protect the decentralization of the network. The main point about the blockchain is that it's decentralized, meaning no one person or government can gain control over the network. The blockchain is just a series of transactions. With proof of work, people compete to be the next to write the new block of transactions by solving and basically guessing an equation that actually needs supercomputers. And the reason no one can consistently be first to working out the answer is because these equations are very complex and it just takes a lot of computing power. Whoever finds the solution first gets rewarded with two things. One of them is to write the next block in the blockchain, which isn't really a prize at all. The other prize though is coins, and that is a prize because they have a monetary value and you can sell them to pay for your computers and all the energy it took to guess the answer. In a proof of work blockchain, guessing the right answer to the equation means that you've proved to the network you actually did the work and so it can be agreed that you should be rewarded with coins. This works great to keep the blockchain in good order, but it is resource heavy, slow, cumbersome, expensive, and just really a waste of time for only just keeping the network in good order. So if there was a better way to do this, then it would be cheaper, faster, and would also let the network grow because you reduce barriers to entry. That's where proof of stake comes in. And if you are getting any value out of this video, I'd love it if you could subscribe and join the community. But let's talk about proof of stake, what it is and why people are a little bit excited about it. Proof of stake does things completely differently to proof of work. Whereas with proof of work, it's a big competition between the most powerful supercomputers to beat out the competition, staking creates a contest of completely normal coin holders. We can put our coins up as a locked stake and take part in the contest to be able to forge the next block of the blockchain. Anyone who puts up a locked stake of coins can win, and it's decided by a few factors such as how long your coins have been staked, but there's also a random element in there just to keep the network as fair as possible. 
Whoever wins gets to forge the next block in the blockchain. And as we know, if you get to do that, you also get rewarded with coins. So there is a monetary incentive for people to stake their coins. What's kind of cool about proof of stake as well is that everyone who stakes their coins has to keep the network in good order because if they don't, they can lose their stake, which means that you can actually keep the network in good order for way cheaper because you're not putting so much computing power to solve equations that really are just completely useless. Proof of stake is a form of compensation then for people to participate in the network and the blockchain. And it seems as a more cost-effective and balanced way to support the blockchain. And it can also make the cryptocurrency less volatile as people are incentivized to invest in the platform and keep coins, which could in turn increase the value of the cryptocurrency overall through simple supply and demand. Unfortunately though, staking isn't as easy as just putting money into a bank account and knowing that you're gonna get a 2% return after six months. Each coin may have different rules, different returns, and the barriers to entry for staking are actually quite high. You'll probably need around $20,000 worth of Ethereum coins to get into staking because there is a lower limit of the amount you can stake. Also, you may have to keep your coins staked for a couple of years. This is on the Ethereum network. I'll get onto that in a second with Ethereum 2.0 but that's a lot of money and a long time to stake your coins for a return that isn't actually guaranteed right now. The amount of people that can also participate is restricted to the hundreds per day, meaning that you probably won't get in. The rate of return is also not fixed, so you actually won't know how much of a return you will get from your coins because the return diminishes with the more people that join. So this actually all sounds really unappealing because the barriers to entry are high, the returns, depend on how many people are in so you don't actually know them. Luckily though, all this is just taken away from normal consumers because there are exchanges that you can go to that make things way simpler. Exchanges like Binance and Coinbase make it much easier for their customers to stake. I will link them both in the description so you can go and have a look at their staking options. But essentially, they do all the back-end blockchain stuff and then make it consumer-friendly. So you don't have to put a massive amount of money on account. And you can also stake your coins for a much shorter time period. And they should give you a better idea of how much you should receive in return as well. If you use an exchange like Binance to stake coins, you can think of it as a staking pool. You join other people and Binance take a small cut on top, but it actually enables you to stake in the first place. In my opinion, even though staking isn't fundamentally like gaining interest from a bank, the outcome is similar. Hand over your coins and then after a certain period of time, get your rewards. So should you stake your coins? Is it a good investment? Well, Ethereum, just as an example, is going through a big change right now from proof of work to proof of stake. Most people think this is a good thing. It will reduce the barriers to entry for people entering into the blockchain, which means more people and a more stable blockchain. It also enables the normal consumer to participate in the rewards of the blockchain and is expected to further open up cryptocurrency investing to a wider audience. For sure, there are many benefits to staking including actually earning rewards. I guess you could think of it like an interest on the currency that you hold rather than just hoping the overall value goes up. Although it is definitely not interest as we've learned, you can earn some income or extra coins from staking and earn a return without having to sell your coins to lock in a profit that you have. In this way, it gives investors more options, which is always a good thing, but there are still risks, such as potentially not knowing the rate of return you'll get, making investment decisions quite hard to make. Potential stakers then must balance the risk of their coins being locked up for a significant period of time and having price movements fluctuate during that time that you can't take advantage of either way. Although staking products from Binance and Coinbase do make this easier with shorter time periods. I would love to know your thoughts on staking coins. Do you think it's a good idea, a bad idea? Is it the future or do you think there are too many problems right now? All of your thoughts, I would love to know in the comments section. Also, please do subscribe for way more crypto content. Check out the description for way more information and videos and I'll see you in the next one.